Yashar Jasher, 76. And Moshe, the son of Amram, was still king in the land of Cush in those days. And he prospered in his kingdom. And he conducted the government of the children of Cush in justice, rather justice, in righteousness and integrity. And all the children of Cush loved Moshe all the days that he reigned over them. And all the inhabitants of the land of Cush were greatly afraid of him. And in the fortieth year of the reign of Moshe over Cush, Moshe was sitting on the royal throne while Adonai, rather Adonai, the queen, was before him. And all the nobles were sitting around him. And Adonai, the queen, said before the king and the princes, What is this thing which you, the children of Cush, have done for this long time? Surely you know that for forty years that this man has reigned over Cush, he has not approached me, nor has he served the Elohim of the children of Cush. Now therefore hear, O ye children of Cush, and let this man no more reign over you, as he is not of our flesh. Behold, Menachres, my son is grown up, let him reign over you. For it is better for you to serve the son of your Lord than to serve a stranger, slave of the king of Mitzrayim. And all the people and nobles of the children of Cush heard the words which Adoniah, the queen, had spoken in their ears. And all the people were preparing until the evening, and in the morning they rose up early and made Manakras, son of Kikanas, king over them. And all the children of Cush were afraid to stretch forth their hand against Moshe, for Yahuwah was with Moshe. And the children of Cush remembered the oath which they swore unto Moshe. Therefore they did no harm to him. But the children of Cush gave many presents to Moshe and sent him from them with great honor. So Moshe went forth from the land of Cush and went home and ceased to reign over Cush. And Moshe was sixty-six years old when he went out of the land of Cush. For the thing was from Yahuwah, for the period had arrived which he had appointed in the days of old to bring forth Yashar'el from the affliction of the children of Ham. So Moshe went to Midian, for he was afraid to return to Mitzrayim on account of Pharaoh. And he went and sat at a well of water in Midian. And the seven daughters of Reuel, the Midiani, went out to feed their father's flock. And they came to the well and drew water to water their father's flock. So the shepherds of Midian came and drove them away. And Moshe rose up and helped them and watered the flock. And they came home to their father Reuel and told him what Moshe did for them. And they said, a Mitzri man has delivered us from the hands of the shepherds. He drew up water for us and watered the flock. And Reuel said to his daughters, And where is he? Wherefore have you left the man? And Reuel sent for him and fetched him and brought him home, and he ate bread with him. And Moshe related to Reuel that he had fled from Mitzrayim and that he reigned 40 years over Cush and that they afterward had taken the government from him and had sent him away in peace with honor and with presence. And when Reuel had heard the words of Moshe, Reuel said within himself, 
I will put this man into the prison house, whereby I shall consolate the children of Cush, for he has fled from them. And they took and put him into the prison house. And Moshe was in prison ten years. And while Moshe was in the prison house, Sipporah, the daughter of Reuel, took pity over him and supported him with bread and water all the time. And all the children of Yashadael were yet in the land of Mitzrayim, serving the Mitzrim in all manner of hard work. And the hand of Mitzrayim continued in severity over the children of Yashadael in those days. At that time, Yahuwah smote Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, and he afflicted him Rather, and he afflicted with the plague of leprosy from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, owing to the cruel treatment of the children of Yashara'el was this plague at that time from Yahuwah upon Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim. For Yahuwah had hearkened to the prayer of his people the children of Yashar'el, and their cry reached him on account of their hard work. Still his anger did not turn from them, and the hand of Pharaoh was still stretched out against the children of Yashar'el. And Pharaoh hardened his neck before Yahuwah, and he increased his yoke over the children of Yashar'el and embittered their lives with all manner of hard work. And when Yahuwah had inflicted the plague upon Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, he asked his wise men and sorcerers to cure him. And his wise men and sorcerers said unto him, that if the blood of little children were put into the wounds, he would be healed. And Pharaoh hearkened to them, and sent his ministers to Goshen, to the children of Yashadael, to take their little children. And Pharaoh's ministers went and took the infants of the children of Yashadael from the bosoms of their mothers by force. And they brought them to Pharaoh daily, a child each day. And the physicians killed them and applied them to the plague. Thus did they all the days. And the number of the children which Pharaoh slew was three hundred and seventy-five. But Yahuwah hearkened not to the physicians of the king of Mitzrayim, and the plague went on increasing mightily. And Pharaoh was ten years afflicted with the, that plague, Still the heart of Pharaoh was more hardened against the children of Yashara'el. And at the end of ten years, Yahuwah continued to afflict Pharaoh with destructive plagues. And Yahuwah smote him with a bad tumor and sickness at the stomach. And that plague turned to a severe boil. At that time, the two ministers of Pharaoh came from the land of Goshen, where all the children of Yashara'el were, and went to the house of Pharaoh and said to him, We have seen the children of Yashara'el slacken in their work and negligent in their labor. And when Pharaoh heard the words of his ministers, his anger was kindled against the children of Yashara'el exceedingly, for he was greatly grieved at his bodily pain. And he answered and said, Now that the children of Yashara'el know that I am ill, they turn and scoff at us. Now, therefore, harness my chariot for me, and I will betake myself to Goshen, and will see the scoff of the children of Yashara'el 
with which they are de deriding me. So his servants harnessed the chariot for him. And they took and made him ride upon a horse, for he was not able to ride of himself. And he took with him ten horsemen and ten footmen, and went to the children of Yasharael to Goshen. And when they had come to the border of Mitzrayim, the king's horse passed into a narrow place, elevated in the hollow part of the vineyard, fenced on both sides, the low, plain country being on the other side. And the horses ran rapidly in that place and pressed each other, and the other horse pressed the king's horse. And the king's horse fell into the low plain while the king was riding upon it. And when he fell, the chariot turned over the king's face. And the horse lay upon the king. And the king cried out, for his flesh was very sore. And the flesh of the king was torn from him. And his bones were broken. And he could not ride. For this thing was from Yahuwah to him. For Yahuwah had heard the cries of his people, the children of Yahshara'el, and their affliction. And his servants carried him upon their shoulders, a little at a time. And they brought him back to Mitzrayim, and the horsemen who were with him came also back to Mitzrayim. And they placed him in his bed, and the king knew that his end was come to die. So Apranit the queen, his woman, came and cried before the king. And the king wept a great weeping with her. And all his nobles and servants came on that day and saw the king in that affliction and wept a great weeping with him. And the princes of the king and all his counselors advised the king to cause one to reign in his stead in the land, whomsoever he should choose from his sons. And the king had three sons and two daughters, which Aparanit, the queen, his woman, had borne to him, besides the king's children of concubines. And these were their names, the firstborn, Othri, the second, Adekam, and the third, Morayan, and their sisters. The name of the elder, Batia, and of the other, Akuzi. And Othri, the firstborn of the king, was an idiot, precipitate, and hurried in his words. But Adakam was a cunning and wise man, and knowing in all the wisdom of Mitzrayim, but of unseemly aspect, thick in flesh, and very short in stature. His height was one cubit. And when the king saw Adakam, his son, intelligent and wise in all things, the king resolved that he should be king in his stead after his death. And he took for him a woman, Gadudah, daughter of Abelat. And he was ten years old, and she bore unto him four sons. And he afterward went and took three women and begat eight sons and three daughters. And the disorder greatly prevailed over the king, and his flesh stank like the flesh of a carcass cast upon the field in summertime, during the heat of the sun. And when the king saw that his sickness had greatly strengthened itself over him, he ordered his son Adakam to be brought to him, and they made him king over the land in his place. 
and at the end of three years, the king died in shame, disgrace, and disgust. And his servants carried him and buried him in the sepulcher of the kings of Mitzrayim in Sa'an Mitzrayim. But they embalmed him not, as was usual with kings, for his flesh was putrid, and they could not approach to embalm him on account of the stench. So they buried him in haste. For this evil was from Yahuwah to him, for Yahuwah had requited him evil for the evil which in his days he had done to Yashara'el. And he died with terror and with shame. And his son Adakam reigned in his place.